Hallelujah. Amen. I am I'm very honored to be here. First, I'd like us to thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'd like us to celebrate with me, Pastor Ben and his wife. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. And then Pastor Nathaniel, thank you. Thank you. I honor you and your dear wife. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's hold hands together. Mm, dominion. Spirit of the living God. You are the one who turns titles to experiences. Do it in our lives. Reveal Jesus. Bring us to dimensions of grace, of power. Bring us to dimensions of wisdom and illumination. The Bible declares that the NS expectation of creation awaits our manifestation. Make it happen in this conference. Lord, we vow as always to give you the glory and to give you the praise. We pray that whilst you grant us access to light, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Turn around every captivity like the streams of the Negev. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. It's our prayer. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory King of kings Lord of lords Faithful and true Lamb of God We worship you King of kings Lord of lords Faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Here at this conference, we praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away. That washes our pains away. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll be very, very fast. Um, this is our first session together. And just to stir our hearts and reveal to us by the Spirit the things that pertain unto light, the things that pertain unto dominion. Amen. First Peter chapter 2. Let's start from there tonight. First Peter chapter 2. And verse 9. Apostle Peter is teaching here. First Peter chapter 2. And says, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. And holy nation. A peculiar people. That you should show forth. The praises of him 
who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a kingdom of priests. Now, according to scripture, the Bible tells us when you read Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26, the Bible says, and God said, the word here is Elohim. Elohim declared and said, let us make man this species of our creation and let us make him in a way and a manner that it will be after our image please say image and our likeness so we understand from scripture that man was made in the image and the likeness of God the image of God talks of his character and the likeness of God talks of his functionality so man was made to be like God and to act like God are we together and on the strength of these descriptions man began to assume several names as revealed from scripture the Bible calls believers several names according to this order of the image and the functionality of God for instance the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ it's not just a description it's a name the Bible says we are light the Bible says we are salt. The Bible says we are ambassadors. Are we together? The Bible says we are sons of God. Behold what manner of love it says that the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The Bible calls us branches. I am the vine, he says, and ye are the branches. So all of these names attempt to reveal to us the scope and the dimensions of our being the image and the likeness of God and in dealing with his likeness he calls us a very strange name he says we are a kingdom of priests the king priest dimension of a believer is a dimension that is very very important because the ministry of priesthood, the priesthood ministry of the believer has to do with sustaining the ability to do business with God in the realm of the spirit. This is, this is a dimension that defines the scope of our intimacy with God. In the order of the Levitical, the Aaronic priesthood, these were men who mediated through the ministry of intercession. They mastered the art of communicating with the realm of the spirit to make for things to happen. But then the Bible also says that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. The cry of the elders and hath made us unto our God kings and priests. And then it defines the domain the domain the jurisdiction of our reign he says we shall reign on earth because a king is not a king until there is a defined territory are we together and so the bible does not tell us that we are kings and priests in heaven it says here yeah, we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall reign then it defines the geography of our dominion it says we shall reign on earth are we together so the Bible says that we are kings. We are not just light. We are not just salt. We are not just ambassadors. We are not just joint heirs with Christ. We are not just branches. We are not just oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. But then here he says we are kings. And in this conference, I'm interested in this dimension because it is the dimension that makes for our dominion. The word dominion is a very interesting word. I wrote down a few things here that I would just like to read out. Dominion means sovereign control. Dominion means influence. Dominion means government. So you are manifesting dominion to the degree to which you sustain the ability to wield control over creation. Now, it's very interesting that God went as far as defining what we should dominate. And among all of the list, man is not mentioned. Are we together? Yes. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the cattle, 
all of the creeping things and so it, any spirit that will seek to subjugate man as though an animal is a reflection of the spirit of the antichrist because man was not in the least however as you will be learning there must be a system of compelling man to buy into the ideology of the kingdom the name for it is influence and it is also a dimension of dominion that the saints in this season and within these days must master the art of providing within a territory if we must see the name of Christ exalted the speakings of God the second thing I want to establish is that the speakings of God are twofold many of you may have heard me say it again and again and this is what I believe will establish the basis for our discussion tonight that when God deals with man please look up the communications of God is twofold number one he speaks from his realm you may call it the realm of light you may call it the realm of eternity and from that realm everything is finished everything is finished it is God's realm is not future God's realm is not past God's realm is not even present God's realm is now is a realm there is no time there is no distance so when God speaks from the standpoint of that realm he would talk as though everything were finished if God were to speak for, to you from that realm, he would not talk about going to build a house. He would not talk about going to have a child. No. He will talk with no difference whether he's starting or finishing the conversation. This is how God speaks. Are we together now? So God can tell you, go for the harvest. And then you go there and you find a bag of seeds and you're plowing materials. And he said, Lord, you told me to go for a harvest not to plant because in his realm he does not see limitation of time the fragmentation of time does not exist I, I, are you understanding what i'm where we're just now this alone is a deliverance for someone because if you do not understand the speakings of god you are going to get into a lot of trouble the pressure and the power that comes from his voice will make you think he said do it now God can speak to you and say, have you started the ministry and show you the billions of people? Whereas in time, that ministry would start 10 years later. But from his dimension, it is now. And if you do not sustain the intelligence of converting the speakings of God to relate to your domain, you will make many mistakes. Remember the advantage, the power of a believer among many other indices is the ability to work with time. Is God speaking to us? There is a reason why I am explaining this. So that when you study from scripture, you will see that everything communicated by the spirit is finished. From the foundations of the earth, he says, the lamb was slain. A reality. Paul began to buy into this truth, teaching the church in Hebrew. Please give it to us, Hebrew chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Let's start from verse 6. He made reference to Psalm 8, the Psalm of David, where the psalmist said, he said, in one place, one testified saying, what is man? Now we're dealing with man here. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. Next verse. It says, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels the word there is elohim not angelio a little lower than god and then he says you have crowned him now notice notice the tenses notice the description it's finished you have crowned him with glory you have crowned him with honor and you have set him above the works of your hands next verse nine Eight. It says, thou has put all things, please go back to eight. Thou has put all things in subjection, not will put. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. 
For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he said he left nothing that was not put under him. The realm of eternity. So Paul comes down to our realm and says, but now, as far as our perspective is concerned, we do not yet see. Yet means there is a lag in time. The same way it can be morning in another region of the world and it's still night here. It means morning will come but has not come yet. So you can take advantage of that information. Are, are you? Yet means something that will happen but has not happened yet. So it says we do not yet see all things under him. So from the mind of Christ from the perspective of God, there, sh there is no sinner on earth again. The blood has covered for everyone. But in experience, we still see people go to hell every day. From the perspective of God, there should not be anyone in Zion saying, I am sick. There should not be anyone. In the concept of lack is not something that his realm can accommodate. It's not a reality from that perspective. How be it within our jurisdiction of reign, we still see these things there. This is why this conference was put together. To sustain the technology and the spiritual intelligence that will convert the things that are finished to become our experience. This is dominion. Are we together? So God speaks to you about your family and says, hope everyone has entered the fullness of prophecy. And you say, Lord, I'm not exactly aware. Last time I checked, there's nothing that seems to work in my family. And you think God will say, oh dear. God will say, well, um, I already told you, once have I spoken, it's for you to hear twice. The first is for information. The second is to provide understanding. But I have spoken once that it is finished. Many believers, this is where the body of Christ continues to make mistakes. Because when we access the speakings of God from the realm of eternity, from his realm, we make the mistake of, now we should believe that because it is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. That report is true. But then we are mandated to make the realm of God our experience. Jesus taught us when mentoring us at the Beatitudes, he said, let it be done in earth as it is in the heavens. Is that correct? That means that we peep into the mind of God and see realities that have been finished, then sustain the technology of making them become true in our lives. So let it be done in the earth as it is in the heavens. There are many propositions we have in our Christian experience that are not captured in reality. God is this. I am this. I cannot be sick, we say. I cannot be a failure, we say. And we are right, but our lives show that we have not gotten it. I'm the head and not the tail, you are right. Above and not beneath, you are right. I am a king, I am a priest, you are right. But the experience shows that darkness seems to be very, very healthy in and around our lives. The challenge is that we have not understood that the dimensions of God's speakings is twofold. Please don't forget this. That there is a dimension. When God speaks from his realm, he speaks finished. He is Alpha Omega. The word and is a mistake. He is not Alpha and Omega. He is Alpha Omega. In God's mind, yesterday and tomorrow mean nothing. There's no such thing. It does not exist. It's a system that was built to help us relate with him. He broke yesterday and separated it from tomorrow to be able to help us know him and work with him. For instance, if there were no tomorrow, then there will never be an opportunity to correct the mistake of yesterday. Remember, his mercies are new every morning. So if there is no morning in your scope, that's why Satan cannot be forgiven because he does not live in time. The possibility of his entering tomorrow does not, is not there. He cannot be a partaker of the mercies of God. 
Are we blessed? So we have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests. We take advantage of this understanding as we begin to relate within our system. So it is established now that there are two dimensions of the speakings of God. Uh, you may want to call it the prophetic dimension. You may want to call it speakings from his realm. But then there must be the experiential manifestation of the same. When what is in heaven becomes same as what is in the earth, then the kingdom has come. The kingdom only comes when his will is being done. Are we together? This is very, very important. The dominion of the saints in the earth is the only way, please listen, the dominion of the saints here in the earth is the only way the name and the purposes of the Christ will be exalted. If the saints do not walk in the reality of dominion, if the saints do not walk in the reality of this influence and power and the governance of the Christ, then the name and the purposes of God will suffer. This is very important. But tonight I just want to take um, just an aspect, just touch quickly and then we'll pray. We have one more session. The primary platform provided for dominion in this earth is called influence. Please write. Let's discuss the concept of influence for a few minutes because believers love Jesus with all their heart but we have not understood the advantage and the necessity of influence in enthroning the Christ within our sphere. The primary platform for dominion is influence. What is influence? Influence, let me state very quickly, is the capacity to have an effect on the convictions of a person on the mindset of a person or a territory the ability to have an effect on a man's conviction the ability to have an effect on the conviction of a territory is called influence and this is the system please listen by which the Christ and his purposes would find expression within a territory please someone shout influence one more time say influence. influence the ability to provide an effect on your convictions I hope you know the whole journey of a believer is a journey of convictions I'm on my way headed for hell based on a set of belief systems I have imbibed as true then a message comes to me that proposes the love of the father revealed through the substitutionary sacrifice of the Christ and that message has the power the Bible says to alter my convictions I make a decision in honor of that conviction and my life begins to revolve around my new conviction conviction is powerful but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded it's not enough to just believe you must be persuaded we are product of our conviction. Our territory is a reflection of a central conviction. Now, whether it is an economic conviction, a spiritual conviction, a sociological con conviction, it doesn't matter. We, we build companies around convictions. Products are built on convictions. The health industry today thrives because there is a proposition by health experts that taking this drug or taking this product or going organic can help your lifespan is that true you believe that conviction and it forced you to patronize a product that was proposed to help you achieve that conviction is powerful when a thief steals there are many things he would have concluded in his heart before stealing one of it is that I can never, never make it with the dignity of kingdom integrity. There's no point. And then that conviction will sponsor an energy and creativity. The same creativity he did not have will come on grounds of another information and he will go to steal. So whoever and whatever shapes the conviction of a territory must be guarded jealously. 
because that means that is the builder and the shaper of a civilization are we together the concept of dominion is not vague at all the concept of dominion is is not complicated it is simply because for a very long time our focus as far as kingdom advance is concerned has been around what we know to be evangelism and that is very important but the limit of evangelism is enthroning Christ in the hearts of men it does not spill over to make to create changes within a territory now the hearts are important rocks are not going to heaven the rivers are not going to heaven it is men who will transit and leave all of this will be washed away with the old heaven and the old earth so it is important that the enthroning of the Christ be first in the hearts of men but because those men are domiciled within a territory that is sociological in context and that all men one of the fundamental rights that God gave man is the right to choose even at the expense of your eternal destiny you are allowed to choose and because we, we are dwelling in a domain that has other people who will make choices that negate what we have chosen we must sustain an ability to live in that territory. And so dominion was given to the saints. It is sin, not just wrong, to ignore dominion. Our contending for dominion is proof that we love Jesus. Our contending for dominion is proof that we seek to see the territories come under the influence and the government of the Christ. Are we together? Yes. There was a very serious argument that the psalmist had. And I want us to just look at it and then I'll share Psalm 24. This was a psalm to settle a debate. Because until now, several kings began to fight for land in the earth. And the kings in, in their arrogance, many of them raised themselves to be demigods. Men like Darius, men like Nebuchadnezzar, men who would build 90 feet gold and command a territory to bow at the sound of a shofar. And so there had been contentions of kings in the earth. Kings would fight and defeat others and expand their influence. Many of them were thought to be gods in ancient times. When you study classical Greek mythology, many of these men were believed to not be pure human beings. An example is Oak, the king of Bashan. The Bible says he was a man who was superhuman. These men did not act like men. And so to settle that argument, please give it to us, Psalm 24. The Bible settles it once and for all. Help me, Oasis. The earth is the Lord's. Hold on. These lords, you see, must be clarified. Because you call a judge my Lord. You call your landlord my Lord. So there are many lords. Keep that scripture there. So the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. He says, from whence cometh my help? It's a question. He says, I don't know about you, but as for me, my help cometh from the Lord, but not my landlord. The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. All other lords cannot make. This Lord is a maker. A maker. He does not only make heaven and earth, he makes men. Follow me and I will make you. So you know who that Lord is by the mastery, the prowess in making men. That he can turn a man, an ordinary man today, pick him from the dunghill and set him among princes. Whoever has the signature of making men is the Lord we are talking about. We need to clarify this because people are listening from all over the world. No confusion. The Lord we refer to is the Lord, the maker of men. So it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the worlds, the cosmos, and they that dwell therein, they all belong to him. 
who will not fear a man who owns this much you own men you own systems we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor influence is very powerful please listen to me we have done well in evangelism we have developed all kinds of skill to reach the lost that is profitable but the wisdom that is required in the times that we live in must find a way of institutionalizing God within a territory because there can rise another Pharaoh who does not know God and even if Israel knows God they will still be in captivity their knowledge of God did not bring them liberty from Pharaoh it strengthened their conviction in bondage but they were still in bondage please understand what I share with you the nation of Israel were God's covenant people they still remain God's covenant people but they were in bondage the goal was not just to keep them God's covenant people the goal was to take them out from Egypt and Joseph prayed a prayer he said when you are about to leave Egypt take my bones it's a revelation there was a system I operated by I insisted that a territory comes under the influence of the Christ preserve that concept as you are leaving Egypt let it be part the bones talk of structure methodology systems as you leave Egypt do not forget dominion he was saying carry my bones as a reminder that you are not free until you sit on the throne within a territory are you getting what I'm saying now Joseph did not just say carry my bones just because I hate Egypt remember he married the daughter of Potiphar the priest of On it was a way of securing his loyalty but he said do not be deceived I am the prince of Egypt but there is a concept that was given to me that the saints are in bondage until we get to a point by the spirit where the, the governing influence of the king comes into the hands of the saints so he says take my bones take my bones as you start that business take my bones as you do what you do take my bones remember this formula that every time you do not rise to a position of government your convictions will remain but your bondage will also remain that what detaches a people from their bondage is not just their personal convictions but their ability to cause influence over a territory we must sustain the intelligence in this day to cause our territories to buy into our convictions without using force or cruelty this is dominion are we together all of the brands today that we continue to celebrate around the world are only where they are because they have achieved this and many of them effortlessly they have made all that they produce a necessity it has become part they have defined your relevance with those products and so the absence of it affects your psychology your heart comes on your face and everyone knows you're in trouble because something a gadget got missing or whatever it is they have done something to you this is influence when I control your conviction and immortalize my influence on your life that is dominion I don't have to be there I can make you think about me I can make you talk about me now, now I'm, I'm not talking about myself I'm saying this is strategy you think about Facebook every day you think about Instagram every day if Zuckerberg respectfully stands and says Africa you are stupid we will revolt but we'll use Facebook to revolt that is how powerful it can be 
Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, the vision of Nebuchadnezzar that was interpreted by Daniel. When you read Daniel chapter 2, let's, let's read it. Let's start from 44 if that is possible. Just tie up a few things. Is God blessing us already? Don't forget the concepts that we're dealing with. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Daniel is interpreting the king's dream. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever next verse for as much as thou saw a stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron the brass the clay the silver the gold these are different kinds of governments and systems the great god had made known unto the king what shall come to pass after next verse the dream is certain the interpretation is for sure that means it will happen I believe it will happen in my lifetime that a generation will arise that will command a dimension of dominion across the spheres and the systems until the kingdoms of this world, the Bible says, become the kingdoms of our God and of we, his Christ. When that happens, he will come as the king of we kings and with honor we will depart this realm for a cleansing. We are not going to go as some weak people beating, hoping for him to come. No, that's not how you marry. When a man wants to present his bride, she's adorned in her best. No man stands with a weak woman with all kinds of stained garments for a betrothal. No. The majesty of a king is reflected in the beauty of his bride. You study the book of Esther to learn that. And so the king is not coming as the husband of a weak bride. No, the lamb's wife is powerful. And until that statement is made on earth, he will not come. It is true. There may be many signs of the end time. But the Bible says they are only the beginning of the birth pains. There is only one official biblical sign the Bible gives, respectfully speaking. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. So the end is not necessarily tied to God. It is tied to the dominion of the saints. Number two, I'm teaching on something else, but let me just quickly remind you, I hope you know that the saints will not be in the dark when Jesus comes. He is not coming like a thief in the night to the church. I think it's important I just clarify that. Should we clear that air once and for all? 1 Thessalonians 5. It will be dangerous to just leave this without clearing the air. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Say, I'm a Christian. I believe the word of God. All right, let's read. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking of times and seasons. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. Is that true? This is where most times we stop. It is true that he's coming like a thief in the night. For when day, remember he's talking about day. For when day shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon, cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You said you are a Christian, read verse 4. One, two, read. Listen. The Bible says the coming of the Lord will be in the similitude of the days of Noah. Noah was not in the dark as to the coming of the rain. He opened the ark, all the animals came in, the hand of the Lord closed it and rain came. The Bible says looking forward to and hastening the day of his coming. There is a project that the saints must embark on and until it's finished we will delay him. Are we together? 
So the primary platform for kingdom dominion is influence. Influence is very important. Mark chapter 1, please. Let's discuss influence a few minutes and then we're done. The church has done well in terms of the evangelistic approach to kingdom advance. But I think that we have not done commendably well in understanding the other piece of the puzzle that makes for kingdom advance and that is influence the kingdom does not just advance with evangelism alone it is the the two witnesses of evangelism and influence we need evangelism to enthrone Christ in the hearts of men. We need influence to bring territories under the government of the Christ. And if any of them is deficient, no nation can thrive. Are we together? Mark chapter 1, please. Verse 21. The Bible says to look up to Jesus. It's a long reading, so we'll start from 21. And I'd like us to look at the ministry of Jesus. Mark chapter 1, starting from verse 27. I will read 27, starts from verse 27, Mark chapter 1 and verse 27. Now please look up. Okay, let, let's start from 21. Let's start from 21 so that we can understand the context. And they went into Capernaum, this is Jesus now, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught Jesus. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had what authority and not as the scribes and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out next verse let us alone he said what have we to do with you jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know thee you are the holy one of god and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him when the unclean spirit had turned him, he cried with a loud voice and came out. And they were all amazed. Now notice that everything that was happening was having an effect on their convictions. I told you influence is the ability to have an effect on a man's conviction. Notice how their convictions were being altered. Hitherto they had been mentored by the scribes and the Pharisees. Here comes another kind of teacher communicating the truths of the kingdom in a dimension that was provable and it began to alter their convictions. The Bible says they were amazed in so much as they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him 28 next verse go ahead oh dear let me just open very quickly so that okay and immediately what happened everybody say immediately so there can be such speed immediately from one meeting from one service a man introduced a dimension of the kingdom the power the glory of god it had so much effect the marketers were not paid yet they were effective they went around the city and spread abroad his fame it is true that in the days of his power people shall be willing he didn't say the listeners he said the people anybody Immediately, his fame spread abroad throughout territories. Remember, dominion is territorial. A territory is now coming under the influence of a man's conviction. He did not go to a radio station necessarily. Something happened that, that rattled their conviction from top to bottom. We will bring songs that will make governments meet. They will come together and say, let's discuss this song. Is it allowable or not allowable? We will write books that, look, let me tell you, this is more than church. This is kingdom. An ability to provide a level of influence that someone will listen to you. Even if he's not born again, he will not sleep. He can't do the two at the same time. He will either be saved or be awake. But to just lie down and carelessly assume that you made noise, it will not happen again. Nicodemus was disturbed by Jesus' teaching. 
he acted like nothing happened to him but he came in the night and said look I am a parliamentarian but I that something is wrong talk to me again we will shake governments and shake systems we will not use swords we will use an intelligence that is not in the earth realm the Bible says immediately his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about Galilee 29 29 it's a long reading let's see how far we can go and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John next verse but Simon's wife lay sick of fever now I'm taking all these things because I want you to see go to 35 so that we'll end, we'll end at 37. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed. I will be showing you the systems that make for dominion. And one of them is prayer. He went to do the things that keep him powerful, to wield influence over a territory. And whilst he was praying, 36 happened. The Bible says, and Simon and they that were with him followed after. Did you ever read in your Bible that Gentiles will come to your light? These days of begging is over. There is a dimension of the power of God that will come through and from the saints that will compel territories to come Micah prophesied it Isaiah prophesied it the disciples followed nobody leaves what works and when they had found him may this be someone's testimony when they had found him neither can you light a lamp and hide it they looked for him and did not complain. Dominion. A man's conviction has been so connected to your ideology. They will inconvenience themselves with joy in honor of what you have proposed. This is dominion. And then he says, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. I've said it again and again pastor there are things a man can have only rich men will look for you there are things you can have only poor men will look for you there are things you can have only educated men will look for you there are things you can have only uneducated men will look for you there are things when you have only diplomats will look for you but there are things when you have all men Children looked for Jesus. Men of power looked for Jesus. Prostitutes and harlots looked for Jesus. Economic manipulators looked for Jesus. They climbed trees to see him. And Jesus was very wise. Jesus did not act like Joshua Seman would have acted. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. You are a man of influence. You control a system that can affect the finances of others. I cancel my crusade. Let me go to your house. Jesus is canceling a crusade to attend to one man. You would call that favoritism. He calls it a system of enthroning the purposes of God. Look at the effect of that one encounter. Many people were forgiven. The man changed. When the man who oppresses you financially repents, you are free. <laughs> When you mentor kings, what are you? When kings call you Abba, what are you? Influence. The average believer does not know that influence is a mandate of the church it is not something to desire if you are ambitious it is not something to desire just when you are non-conservative i'm an ambitious person i want to work with you and no it is a mandate in fact it is the only way that the government of the christ 
I continue to advocate these contemplations because, Pastor, if we do not understand the dominion mandate, we will lose a generation. This is for sure. We will lose a generation. So conferences like this, as God is providing, is mentoring and guiding us on the systems that will bring the saints out from the shackles of darkness. Isaiah chapter 60, he says, Arise, shine, karuska baruta skiada, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Then he says, Gentiles, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Is the Hebrew rendition to who bohu, confusion and chaos. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Verse 3 is a prophecy I have received almost every day of my life for myself. That Gentiles will come. It is hard to call the attention of Gentiles because they are arrogant people. So let what he put on you call them. He says, Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. That's the song. Don Moen really got it. It's the prophecy. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us prophesy to yourself distant shores and the islands will see your light so peter says we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood. He says we are peculiar and we have a mandate. We have been called forth to show is the Hebrew word doxazo, the displaying of a king and all his affluence like Ahasuerus called on Vashti. Come and let the princes know what you are made of. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. But you see, the principles of dominion in theology is such that an object cannot glorify itself. It is wrong to glorify yourself. You prove you are worthy of glory by investing your glory in another that is outside of you. It is the excellency of what comes out of you that gives you glory. Now, please understand this. We are taking it progressively because you have to understand this. The Father cannot glorify himself. No. It is against the law of honor. So the father invests that glory in the son. The excellency of the son is how the father is glorified. Now the son cannot glorify himself. Are we together now? He depends on his bride, the church, to bring glory to the son. But the church is weak in itself. So he attached the Holy Spirit with the church. So that the church now, the ecclesia, in partnership with the Holy Ghost, will bring glory to the son. Now, the father is glorified in the son. The son is glorified in the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit. But the church is left. So he gave us the grace to command a dimension of influence over territories that will dumbfound principalities and powers. He called it the hidden wisdom of the ages. It's a mystery wisdom that has been hidden for a species of people. That dominion is how the church is now glorified. So that the equation becomes balanced. The father is glorified in the son. The son is glorified in the exploits, the excellency of the church church in partnership with the Holy Spirit the glory of the church comes from his dominion over the cosmos this is the principle of shared dominion are we together the father has been glorified in the son very clearly Jesus when he sat down at the right hand of the father he brought glory to the Father. Now the church, in partnership with the Holy Ghost, continues to 
do the things that make for the glorification of the son but creation is refusing to allow the church find glory and so the holy spirit is now revealing this mystery let me show you something very powerful are, are you getting blessed am i boring you ephesians chapter 3 please paul is teaching the church in ephesus and he's sharing a very powerful mystery let's start from verse 5 ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 he's talking about the wisdom of god he says which in other ages was not made known unto the what sons of man as now it is now being revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets verse 6 uh, that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and this and that and that and that now go to verse 8 the real revelation is in verse 9. It says, But unto me who am less than the least of the saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make all men see. There is a dimension of sight that comes through these ministries so that the saints can now be shown the ways of God that makes for dominion. It is a grace that does not make men hear. It makes men see. Are we together? Yes. The wisdom, the fellowship of this mystery that has been hidden, but now in our day and our time is being revealed. The wisdom of God with which we will use to dumbfound principalities and powers. Let me tell you, Boko Haram and ISIS are not the only ones preparing for something coming. The Ecclesia of God, the name given to this mystery strategy, there is a revelation of the saints that is about to shock the world. It's not a parable, it is true. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Why? Because Christ is still being formed. The experience of the formation of Christ. We don't look like it yet. But when he is done with us, he will lift us like a trophy. And we will crush Babylon. The Bible says Babylon the great is falling in one hour. Now whatever you destroy that has been for ages in one hour, that is mastery. It says in one hour that Babylon, that she goddess that rides upon the horse. The Bible says the kings of the earth have benefited. They became wealthy through their fraternity with her merchandise. This is a goddess that sits on a system and manipulates government. But there is a generation that is arising listen to me and I continue to cry and challenge Nigeria God's firstborn in Africa that we are it's, it's no it's, there's no sentiments about it it is true there is an emergence from 2005 pastor I had a vision of the revival that is coming to Africa I began to share these things since those days that God showed me I saw an effulgence of power I saw people who thought they went to live abroad they did not know that they were sent to learn the ways of the Medes and the Persians because they are returning back I saw it I saw captains of industry, men who had helped to build other governments and the systems. The same grace that came upon four lepers and they began to speak to themselves. Why sit we here? We need to stand up. This conference is not just the conference of a church. It is a reminder by the spirit that we are in these days of his power. We are in seasons of glory where God by his spirit is bringing this revelation, planting hunger in men and helping men understand that truly the kingdoms of this world have become and will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. The technology for this dominion 
is what has not been fully revealed. This is why the saints are afraid. Because we think that Goliath will fall by the arsenals of Saul. There is another arsenal we have been trained with that even the kings of Israel do not yet know. They thought that we will use swords and spheres. But this kind of battle is a battle of covenant. It's not a battle of strength. It says some trust in horses and some chariots. But we, there is a generation that uses a name to fight. A name as a weapon. Listen. How you will rise to the top is none of your business. Esther, just walk with Haggai. The keeper of the king's virgins. There is an oil he will give you. It will not take time before the king makes you his queen. Listen, the mystery of how we will sit at the epicenter of governmental activities. Leave it to the intelligence of God. How your company will become a voice. Leave it to God. Just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how her, the womb of a woman with child, how bones, a seed that is boneless, becomes a bone that cannot break. That is God's office. Leave it to the Lord of hosts. Listen. We always will not look like it until it happens through us. And our weakness is intentional so that the excellency of power because listen the strength of God does not come on strength no when the strength of God comes and finds weakness it goes back so you call God strength only when you are weak so he's allowing us to be weak is is not to let the world laugh at you it's a system of attracting his strength Oh Jacob, you cannot be called with a new name when you are complete. I must make you inadequate as proof that I am your completion. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. We're about to pray. Shalus Micah chapter 4. Prophet Micah. Remember the Bible says that the things that are written aforetime, it says they are for our learning, so that we through the comfort of scripture may find hope. These prophets never leave these things. They only released it and left. But there is a generation, every generation will not look on to prophecy. There is a generation that must fulfill that prophecy. But in the last days, Oasis, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord, hold on, the house of the Lord is a mountain on its own. Do you know what that means? Mountains talk of spheres of influence. But he's saying the house of God is a city a mountain on its own and it says it shall be established in the top of other mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills effect and people shall flow to it verse 2 they will advise themselves many nations will come will come will come compelled by an ability of the spirit is the greek word anakazo the ability of the spirit that compels men when the feast was put together he said go to the streets bring people some gave complaints one said i just got married i need to spend time with my wife another person gave flimsy excuses and he gave them an ability he said go to the byways compel them to come and many nations shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the God of Jacob. I hope you know the God of Jacob means the God of encounters. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us. We will mentor nations and mentor kings. Days will come when we will be invited to parliaments. And our contribution, listen to me. The presence of God we carry will become an advantage at a sociological level. Not just service, no. That a time will come when they will invite Pastor Nathaniel to the AU summit and say, just blow a shofar. Why? 
because 80% of the leaders were trained like men of God but they are politicians so they are carrying the regalia of politics don't be confused the prophet has seen the apostle has given direction and together they stand up and say we need the sounds of the spirit from Africa to go to the ends of the earth if you don't believe what I'm saying die fast because you will be frustrated you will be very frustrated listen watch your movies fast because soon you will not need your phone again our lives will be a movie unedited unedited it will not just be Netflix and all of don't worry they are entertaining you while we are preparing but when we are done there's no need for any channel you will not need to buy a television you will just need to be alive the earth itself will be the cinema we do not look like it but the force behind us is dangerously powerful we are talking of the ancient of days standing behind a man standing behind a people dominion please believe it I wake up with this consciousness I live with this consciousness you are an advantage to the world listen listen look beyond just your job look beyond just your territory we're talking about the whole world here the definition of darkness is the world without you not Nepa, not power holding company. No. Hallelujah. The mountain of the Lord's house. He sits on the throne in heaven and watches the contention of the throne on earth. But because he's already seated there, it is true that we will be seated in experience. Everyone gathered here and many following online, please listen to me. God is not just raising preachers. God is the revival that is coming will not be on crusade grounds. The revival that is coming will not just be by men of God alone. It is going to be an invasion of the cosmos. In our next session, I'll be sharing with you the details the sequence and the blueprint of the dominion of the saints over cosmos. This is the real Lord of the Rings. It is the battle for dominion. It is, it is all the things that have been acted are only prophetic impulses. Reminders. Arise, he says, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you it will be so fast many people will not believe it that's why I told you leave the technology of your rising to God if you calculate it with your mind you will frustrate yourself don't worry there are a, we are talking about the fountain of wisdom it is within God's power to lift overnight it is within God's power to bring down up please read your Bible the prophet said by this time tomorrow and a foolish man showed up with all his policies on his head and he said don't joke with we are dealing with a prophetic and apostolic dimension of kingdom realities here the same way someone is seated here you will be surprised that when this wind begins to blow by Christmas you are on your knees saying Lord what have you made my life become what is this Listen, please don't get used to the pride of men that make it look as if if, I, if you don't come through me you will not rise some of you may look weak now except for the grace that comes on you some of you may look simple now there are songs that are going to come not composed by men 
These are songs of revival. They are ladders. They are the ladders that men will climb in the spirit, singing the purposes of the kingdom. Listen. God is allowing darkness to be thick so that we will appreciate the emergence of the light. Tonight is a clarion call. Believe us. Do not allow the darkness that continues to happen make you think this agenda has been aborted. God's jealousy is at the back of the dominion of the saints. Study about God's jealousy. It's an aspect of him that is worse than his judgment. The Bible says that jealousy is the rage of a man. You touch a good man's wife and you will see the potentials, the creativity that will come out, out of that pain. It will marvel you the skills that will be employed to punish you. This is the very jealousy that is back of God and this kingdom advance. He factored in your mistakes in the plan. He's already remedied it. So your mistake is no, is it does not interrupt the plan in any way. He's factored in the stubbornness of the saints. His love went that far to incorporate a way to do with it. He factored in the limitation of your parents allowing you to hear the voice of God. He knew that it may take five years before they allow you. All are in the plan. This is what makes him the all wise God. He factored in the corruption of the governments of nations in the plan so that what should have come to you to give you room to grow being delayed he has interjected a system of speed and advantage in the equation rest dear saints you are dealing with a God that is intelligent intelligent enough these are some of the things about God that continue to cause us to marvel and to wonder Oh, I says, we are going to pray. It says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. But that glory will not just be seen on the face of Jesus alone. The illumination will come upon the saints. They will look at us and say, is this not Joseph's son? dimension of grace I don't want to go ahead of myself but there are many things you will learn please whatever you will do do not miss the next session the Lord will be opening our eyes I have an advice for you if you want to enjoy your life please don't die soon the greater part of living is about to unfold you need to be a witness to how this ends you need to be a witness to how Nebuchadnezzar will be turned to an animal. You need to be a witness to how Herod will fall and be eaten of worms. You need to be a witness to how Saul will become Paul. You need to be a witness to how the weak will become strong. I believe in Jesus. This is what we live for. As pastor writes his songs and we take it around the nation, it's not a career, it's a ladder. Saints follow. There is, there is a formation of the army. You see it everywhere. God is using a tool called weakness to build his army. Whoever told you weakness is weak, Weakness is the strongest of all the strengths. When you see a man weak, run away. Because that is strength that can kill. Esther used weakness to kill a strong man. David used weakness to kill Goliath. Have you not seen the people that weakness killed? Weakness can kill. So when a man becomes weak towards God, run away. Because that man already has the tool that can kill. What will defeat Satan is not strength. It is the weakness of the saints that reveals the strength of God. Was it not weakness that died on the cross? Was it not weakness that wore a crown of thorns? Was it not weakness that became strength on the throne?
when God makes you weak do not feel weak rejoice when your ego goes down don't feel insulted he's making you strong we rise in this kingdom when we go down we sit on the throne when we are on our knees listen the formation of this army is through the tool of weakness when he makes you look like you didn't go to school don't feel insulted when he makes you look like your intelligence and don't touch your head and say I know that I'm brilliant it's true he's using weakness weakness is a weapon Satan has never been able to understand weakness was the weapon Jesus used by himself will you not say anything are you the king of the Jews and he keeps quiet because the first man used strength and fell when you fight Satan with strength you have failed so when the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal listen he calls weakness might mighty through God that weakness can pull down strongholds so when a man goes before God and you say, Lord, I cannot help myself. Someone says, with all the brain you have. It is why Satan kills men by making them strong. Please, when you see a man that is weak, step back. Because that is a man that God will do mighty things with. David stands before Saul. And Saul says, thank you. Saul says, what, whose son are you? And he says, you want to fight Goliath? Let me give you the best of my weapons. And David says, your excellency, in this kingdom, there is a way we win. The moment I hold this knife, the strength of God cannot work. The sling is enough. Your business, enough your family background enough I know you were raped don't worry watch the way that weakness becomes a weapon I know that you lived a wayward life stop crying about yesterday it's a weapon oh Jacob weep not when it touches your thigh because it is in your weakness that that glory rests upon you We stand as ones who are proudly weak because in the foolishness of our weakness he has perfected his strength and dumbfounded the nations through our lives we are not embarrassed by our weaknesses <laughs> for when we are weak we are strong it's a mystery Paul came and besought God thrice about his infirmity and God said, Paul, you should rejoice, not cry. Because in this kingdom, my strength is only made perfect in your weakness. So every time you see God leading you through experiences that stings your ego, experiences that cause you to cast your crown. We're going to sing that song. Pastor Nathaniel brought this song for the body. It's a song of revival. It's a song of dominion. It's not a praise and worship song. It's not a special number. No. Please, the other instrumentalists, come help me. Let's just walk as a team and just make this thing. Let's, let's pound the gates of hell within the few minutes that we have in this place. Please listen. Please hear me. I stand in agreement with all the other servants of God that have ministered to you here to bring you a clarion call. It is true that Jesus is coming, but it is also true that the church must rise to a level of power and grace. The dimension of kingdom. Is being restored to the body of Christ 
through the ministry of his holy apostles and prophets bringing believers to a point where we understand that although God is God he has allowed the saints and committed to them the grace the empowerment to see to it that every territory calls upon the name of the Lord the Bible says and Adam knew his wife again and she bore Seth and men began to call upon the name of the Lord. What must be born for men to call upon the name of the Lord again? There are songs that must be born so that men will call upon God. There are businesses. We'll deal with that in a separate section. But right now, the prayer and the cry is the cry of death. Lord, what must put me in a position where I become weak enough for your strength to pick me? When I came, I stood there and Pastor Nathaniel was singing this song about the Holy Ghost. God, I said, this is it. We live in a generation that is embarrassed when we look weak. When anything about our strength is made to be hidden, we are embarrassed. But I show you a mystery. The kings in this kingdom wear their crowns when they cast it. They sit on their throne when they are on their, the ground. If your crown is still on your head, you are not wearing it. Let me repeat. If your crown is still on your head, you are not wearing it. We don't wear the crown on our head. We wear it at his feet. When the crown touches the feet of Jesus, that's when we wear it. So Pastor Nathaniel got it. It's a song for the body. Many of you continue to enjoy the crown on your head. That's why there is no scepter on your hand. Because two kings cannot wear the same crown in a palace. The others wear their crown by letting his feet wear them. So the woman who used her hair to wipe his feet was teaching us a lesson and Jesus said carry this lesson with you wherever you whenever you deal with kingdom use this woman's lesson she brought an alabaster box of pure nard one year's wages that was her greatest strength and broke it not poured it when you pour it your heart you can think about the money she broke it no hope of picking it again then she used her glory Remember the crown sits on your head and rubbed his feet. That is worship. The moment that happened, her name was incorporated in the program of God immediately. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts. What we've come to do I cast my crown hey, I lift my hands I bow my heart It's what I've come to do In your name 
on his feet. In this kingdom, we don't wear our crowns by keeping it on our head. Every king that kept the crown on his head was forced to go to his knees. Nebuchadnezzar became an animal. Herod fell to the ground. Dagon fell before the ark. We will shine. We will shine. We will shine. We will shine. We will but I want to pray for you tonight. Please, we, we may not be able to pray for the sick and so on and so forth tomorrow. And I'm sure a prophet dancer has been here prophesying and speaking over your lives. But I want to pray for you. There are two prayers that I want to pray for you. One is the hunger that will allow you to die enough to carry his glory. It's a real prayer. Please listen to me. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his. The prize for glory is death. The gate that leads to life is death. The prize for all of God is all of you. All of you. All of you. You give God your money and keep your heart, you will take your money and go away. He wants all. The grace to die enough. To be able to carry the effulgence of the power and the glory and the grace of God. Listen to me. Even sociologically, pastor, it is dead men that rule the world. They immortalize their convictions by dying. And when they died, they left their convictions when Jesus died his conviction today begins continues to frontier the kingdom of the father when you die he will put something on your life that is more than a church he will put something on your life that is for a generation when you die he will make you the face of God to a generation listen to me only dead men carry God in this kingdom the weight of God is too heavy for your life it will kill you there is another kind of strength that death brings dead men know no pain dead men cannot be embarrassed dead men have no fortitude for ego they have died but it is still the mystery that brings seeds back to life when they are planted the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified he said then he says verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat falls can you be that corn of wheat that falls I'd like you to pray and I speak over your life that the grace many of you by this prayer you will understand the context of the experiences you've been having with the Holy Ghost. Lord, why are you giving others jobs? And I have uncles who can give jobs and they cannot sign the check. And God says it is not an attack, it's a training. There is a training that takes Esther to the throne. There is a training that takes David to the throne. There is a training that takes Joseph to the throne. Kings are trained in strange ways the ability you know you are royalty not when you see a crown before you your training is the first indicator you receive your first 10 million and God says so it he said, oh God don't don't know I cast that spirit he said no God will make you hear him unusually over that instruction so that there is no confusion. You will have a dream, a vision, a prophet will confirm it all in agreement. The 
the day you drop that money you will wake up in the night and be shocked that you could not sleep you will raise a song and you forget the song because of the sheer stress and God will say it was not the money this is what I wanted to take the money was on it so I shifted it so I can pick hey. that thing Listen, the training of the anointed is very hard. That's why the Bible suffers no man to do them. God suffers no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake because the price is death. So you can be reporting an anointed to God and you act like you didn't hear what you are saying because there is blood that drips on the altar, a testament of the stamina of the dealings of the spirit. I'm not here to lie to you that just a prophetic word and an impartation will make you walk into the experience of dominion. That's whether you are a politician, whether you are a professor, when it comes to the pruning of the saints, it's the same classroom, the same instruction. Lord, I'm not a preacher, I'm just a businessman. He said, join them. It's the same threshing floor. Listen. Whether you are using the oil for anointing or using it to fry something in your kitchen, it's the same threshing floor that crushes the olive. So don't be surprised that you are a businessman, but the way God is training you, is giving you a training that it looks like the training of a bishop. Don't worry. <laughs> God will prune everything. You are well pruned when your life reflects God when he looks at you whatever comes out of you to reflect him that is not him becomes his next project in your life he will fight it till he dies I hope you like what I'm saying because it's the truth we're going to pray the grace to love God more than money to love God more than titles listen truly let me tell you if you want to do business with God, you must die to your ego. I am amazed at the level of humility of your leaders in this ministry. I'm aware of many of them like our pastor and the profound achievements, the accomplishments. And yet when we come before God, everybody shelves that. It's not natural for men. It was produced by death. So the first prayer is to join that campaign of death. When you find yourself dying, rejoice. Because you have to go down through that door of death to find life and come out with it. Is someone ready to pray? Father, take everything that is not you in my life. That will release me to glorify the Christ in my life. Someone is praying. Abalo Salabarudia. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow Lord, I will bow to you To no other God But you Lord, I will worship you Nothing has and but you, Lord. Come and make my heart your voice and sing 
search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Hallelujah. Death. Pastor Nathaniel has been so honored by God to sing his praises to the nations it's not just a product of connection it is a product of death the prophet of God has been so lifted to speak his purposes because of death so then death works in us that life will work in you Hallelujah. The last prayer point for tonight and then we are done. Lord, you are able to do without me. But please don't do without me. Let it please your majesty that I be featured in your program. Let it please your majesty. Listen, listen to me. I tell you sincerely, I have learned by experience that God is able to raise stones. Stones. God is able to bypass any man. But it is an honor. The greatest honor a man can find on earth is to be at the center of God's program. Listen, I just returned from a trip. You cannot imagine how tired have been but my honor it is an honor that I will not it will dwarf the honor of a monarch a million times when God makes you a communicator of his purposes to a generation and grants you access to influence the spiritual conviction of a generation it is an honor that words cannot describe Please listen to me. There are many of us here who have been granted certain degrees of graces, influence. All of this know that God can do without you. You have to keep telling him all the time, I am still available and usable. If I die today, a generation will cry, but it will not be more than seven days. That's it. Dump me in the ground, sing choruses with tears falling on me, and cover the grave, and that's all. So every time I have the opportunity to speak his purposes to the nations, I take it with grace and with value hear me if you pray this prayer well you will live to rest satisfied tonight Lord there are many voices that can sing but can my voice be added to them Lord there are many hands that can heal but can you take these frail hands and place something upon it to be part of your program Lord, there are many bank accounts that can bless your purposes. But can it please you, oh God, to place that grace upon me to be part of those who will frontier your interest. It is a prayer that is a noble one. Lift your voice once again and cry and say, Lord, I'm available. I'm available. I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of 
of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty and back in the north this is how we say it of God I pray for you for those of you that the training has not started here at this conference we release you into seasons of deep spiritual training in the name of Jesus Christ and for those of you who have been weary because you did not understand that what you call tragedy is the dealing that make for kings the dealing that brings a crown out of the ashes i pray for you the stamina the staying power the fortitude to stay until you are made may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ please help that woman and i pray for you in the name of jesus the encounters that you will need to begin to have that will sponsor conviction conviction may the grace that make for those encounters mantle you tonight in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ our next session by the grace of god would have the time i would share with you a very deep mystery about dominion that God shared with me and then I hope I'll remember to share with you a vision recently that God gave me for the body of Christ and will have the time to just minister and cause that the richness of the life and the glory of God would rest upon us but more than that I want you to come ready to receive that as we blow the shofar and cause his majesty to rend the heavens in this place tomorrow that one of the things that we trust that would happen is such a strange move of God in this place. We trust God that cancers and growths and all kinds of things that do not name the name of Christ will give way. And we trust God that more than just miracles and signs and wonders and the prophesyings of the Spirit upon men, that you will carry something that is for a generation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you. God bless you. Holy Spirit, carry me.
Say thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth. Let's fill this place. Aren't we grateful for the words we've heard? For the alignments. For many of us. For direction. For focus. I can't hear you. Fill this place with thanksgiving. Raw thanksgiving from your heart. What a word we had tonight. What a foundation for tomorrow. Lord, we're excited for what's coming in our generation. We're excited for what's coming. This is the generation. This is the generation, Lord. Son, thank you for your church, thank you for your bride, thank you for your word, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone here tonight, thank you, thank you, thank you for the mysteries of your kingdom, for the grace to unveil mysteries. Thank you, Jesus, for light. Thank you. Because this light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot, does not comprehend. Thank you for the time to arise and shine. Because that light has come. First Peter 4, First Peter 4, verse 14. We're closing. I'm not sure Prof is here. Is he coming? He's around. He's coming in. Oh, beautiful. We're closing. He says, First Peter 4, 14. He says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For then the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Our kingdom is a strange kingdom. It's a strange kingdom. Lord, I thank you for the grace to die to self. You know, a lot of you received prophetic words yesterday, but let me announce to you: those words will only launch you to the process to start dying. So know they said to some I remember he said to one of my people he said they, they see wealth you know and I remember the guy sending me a text before conference and I knew it was a dying experience and it was you know it was venting on the text I just sent him emojis laughing I said ha, ha. I said whatever you do don't miss this conference because he wasn't going to come he said eh, my mommy did this I just laughed and he was the one that got the word yesterday. You can hear me. You, you know yourself. <laughs> so, if God is saying you carry wealth, real wealth, be ready for death. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm ready. ready. Say, Lord, I'm available. In Jesus' name. Can you stretch forth your hands to us? Apostle, and speak over him. Open your mouth and speak over him. Speak over him. If a prophet is around, please bring him so he close us out. Ramasakola Basaya. Hey, where, where, where is this prayer coming from? Say, Father. Say, Father. May his voice not expire. 